This is Aether Gazer. I actually recommend it, this game. It's pretty fun. The designs are extremely nice. The combat is very good. Don't play it on blue stacks. Wait for a PC launcher or just play it on your phone or tablet. It's perfect. It is great. I recommend it. I got I like Rahu. She's hot. Like, that's literally the entire reason I stuck with the game initially. And I like Leviathan and a bunch of other characters. So, let's run through them very quickly. First and foremost, Osiris Living Soul. This is my pride and joy. It took me forever. I have her individual functor, which is basically her signature weapon. I also have her sigils. Finally. It took ages, but I have them. I'm still in the, respectively, mid-game esque. Luliang, Rahu, Leviathan, and Okuni, as well as Kagetsushi, are the other characters I like to invest into. They're nice design-wise, he's getting an alt very soon, and I will be pulling for that. But, the designs are hot. The skins are nice. This is a skin for Okuni. She's one of the few characters for the relationship story. You can tell that because of the fact that once you reach Affinity 5, you unlock the rest of her things. If you're looking at a character and wondering if they have a relationship story, please consider that most characters don't. But if they do, you see this little reel here, which allows you to see the actual story in of itself. And for completing Okunish, you get this little icon here, and it's a wallpaper you can use for your loading screens. Regardless of that circumstance, if you're interested in the skins, you have some that are free, like Okunis here, but you also subsequently have ones such as this New Year one, which is paid. These are following a very similar suit to Nikkei, though some of them are available through the packs you purchase, not necessarily through the skin shop. It's complicated. If you're wondering what the gearing system is like, this is basically going to be the same system that ZZZ launches with. So if you like this and if you're enjoying this, I actually say I, it's worth it. I comfortably can recommend this. What essentially it means is that you are going to be placing specific sets within slots. Depending on the slot you place them in, one, two, three, four, five, six, they have different buffs applied. For instance, this barren flower here wants to be placed in one, three, and five. If it's placed in any of these other slots, it's going to give defense and HP as a bonus, as opposed to the skill effect bonus of attack and wind damage. You can eventually reroll these. Once you get them up to level 40, you can eventually decide to cultivate them and slowly but surely reroll the stats it has as enchantments. You can then bind it to a specific character to double up its buff and so on. It's actually pretty nice. It allows you to progress towards a character's perfect build without having to constantly farm artifacts. Instead, what you're farming instead is the materials used to reforge or re-enchant. And this can eventually be done with every other character. But as you see here, I've been focusing on Living Soul and then I'm working my way down the list. And yes, there are overall stat pages here. And yes, this is a work in progress. You then have functors, which are your access keys. Now, functors, you're only leveling up the base stat itself, i.e. level 50 out of 50 in this instance. But if you change a functor, you don't need to re-level it. Instead, you can just level up and transcend the base stat you have. And once you get that, you just slide it in. It already counts which is a nice benefit in my personal opinion. Signature, signature functions vary individually based on what they have to offer. In this instance, this one's tied to Osiris herself. So yes, it does provide you with benefits for her, but some characters don't gain that much. Rahu, for example, really, really wants a signature function, but other characters might not care too much for it. So it's something you do have to wait and value. There is a list and you can find it online, but be aware that in terms of guides, the community itself isn't as large as others. So there won't be as many up-to-date or recent ones. Skills, you can, you, you can just level them all. That's what I'm doing right now. Once you get into the higher tiers, yes, it becomes more expensive, but earlier on, it's inexpensive to raise them. And as long as you focus on a core foundation of three units for one team or six units in total for another team and two teams in total, you will be pretty fine. You're rewarded with a bunch of stuff as a newbie. And there is an event currently ongoing, which I can say is decent in my opinion. It provides you with some nice bonuses. It does provide you with some additional stuff to buy out the shop. And as you progressively level up, you will unlock things such as the restaurant and your base. And it's pretty large. Think Blue Archive's base, but with a bit more customization because outside of the original cafe or lobby in this instance, which this entire area is, and you can see your little chibis walking around, you do instead have the restaurant. Which, while you aren't customizing it personally, you can customize it, the dishes it sells. Beyond that, once the character reaches affinity level 5, you then have the personalized room. Okuni has her room here, and eventually I can read in and move in Leviathan and Osiris. And each of these rooms can respectively be customized as well. So it's something else to consider long term, because this is something else you can work towards and buy things out in the shop with, alongside additional outfits. This game does have an EN cast of voice actors and JP. I personally play in JP, but there are varieties you can prefer and you can utilize if you choose to, such as CN if you like that. In terms of overall, I'd say shop and the UI, it's kind of confusing. At a first glance, this UI is very clean, but once you start getting into the shop, it does kind of uh, lose its clarity. Once you have this initial page here, it displays you skins, for example. You have Osiris, you have Okuni, and you have these two characters. There's something downside you want to mention and want to know is that some of these skins, despite all four of them being available, not all four of them are available within the same place. Osiris is available for purchase as is this girl, Poseidon, alongside Rahu and so on. 
But if you're looking for Okunish, you have to buy that via the pack shop here, which is separate. And so this is a position under which you do have to do a little bit of exploration. You then have your daily pass here, which you can claim regardless of circumstance. You then have rewards for total top ups, i.e. you can get this, which allows you to select a character for free once you do a bunch of top ups. You subsequently have these which are refinements for your individual functors and then poles which you can progressively get over time. If your individual purchases the Welkin or the Welkin equivalent, i.e. the monthly card, you do get your selection of a character and at 25 days within that Welkin, you get the selection of a functor, both of which are quite nice. I recommend doing it if you are a light spender or intend to be a light spender in the game you play or in any gacha game you play, it does give you a significant boost in terms of your account value. You then have the battle pass, which is corporation agreement. In this specific battle pass shop, you do get a currency that's associated with it, yes. But one of the benefits of this is first off, you do get an individual functor, which yes, under a technicality, does count as an exclusive functor for certain units because it can provide you with benefits over others. And if you go for the paid tier, you obviously do get your selection of universal. These are not your signatures. These are just ones that can be slotted onto individuals of a specific path or region. But you do get a decent chunk of rewards, and these are obviously used to refine your already pre-existing functors. So this does mean that you can slowly over time work towards getting the equivalent to an R5 or maxed out version of a character specific functor. In regards to the currency you utilize, you do have a shop relating to it. This is where you can buy things from it, i.e. once again, further refinements, additional currencies for warps and so on. There is a significant amount of value held in this that does sort of incentivize you to play other aspects of the game. And in terms of legitimate game modes themselves, you have the main story, then you have your challenge stages. Hazard clearing is basically, it's like a boss fight essentially. You can go through A, B, and C zones to essentially get buffs that benefit you during the final boss fight, i.e. the core, or you can skip out. For instance, I didn't do B and C, I only did A because I was using a win team, i.e. Osiris and Liang. Recurring dream is your variation of almost Spiral Abyss. If you're looking at other games, you do need multiple teams. In this instance, it's only just this one, which is fine. Past grudges are where you fight bosses you previously faced off in this story and get additional bonuses. Overall, there's a lot of content. And if you're looking at things like dimensional variable, that is the equivalent to your simulated universe. That is the equivalent to your integrated strategies and so on. It's actually quite nice as a game mode. I can comfortably recommend Aether Gazer. I would just say that don't play it on blue stacks, play it on your phone and wait for the PC launcher, which will eventually come. But if you want to add me, here it is. I will link this in the description down below. Either way, hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.